patient. Ladies and gentlemen, this is game number two between Onik and Todak. I think it is a very rare opportunity to be able to play a game with absolutely no pressure. Mm -hmm. Just like no expectations. So you can just do whatever you want. And we're already seeing some pretty notable bits of chaos on the map. SCW trying to steal the bar. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't quite get it, unfortunately. And now being chased down by Momo actually has to back himself into that turret. And first blood goes the way of Todak. I actually didn't realize it until I said his name, but that is CW playing on a gold lane, high and dry. Cho, I guess if it's, there's any time to bring it out, now is the time. Sans, of course, going to be playing on a very signature Yi Sun Shin pick, but a fight already breaking out in the center. Moon taking a lot of damage. He as well is going to be playing on the Grok with Pull Yourself Together. So both these teams, they're just going all out today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you said, it's really not often that you get to play a game with no pressure, so you experiment as much as you can. Personally, I have also not, you know, seen this much, uh, well, diversity in the way that they uh, pick different heroes. But the thing is, the EXP lane is still a pretty normal matchup, so this is probably the most uh, uninteresting lane to watch overall. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit biased. I, I mean, it's a game with no pressure. You want to see more interesting things, but yeah, Doom's gonna get picked off here as well. Keyboy and Moon, a little bit of brawl here in the bottom side jungle. Moon getting too much damage, but pulls up the Guardian's barrier to save himself, and Keyboy backs away. Keyboy on the Selena, though, also a signature pick, so I guess we can expect some uh, good setups here for the team fight. But San's going to be able to get the turtle here on the bottom side. Formaze looking for some constellation prize here. Moon getting some damage, will knock up boots and be able to get away. Momo, though, does not make that escape. All things considered though, that was actually a pretty bad engagement for Todak and being able to walk out with only one casualty, even if it is their jungle, is actually not that bad. We already saw Boots jumping into the backline. 1v3 is able to zone out the entire Todak backline, so you cannot count out Tamas. Oh, Dreon going right in with the Falling Star move under the turret, trying to get 4 maze here. 3 versus 1, poor 4 maze just gets annihilated. Moon here for some backup, but a little too late to the party, nothing much he can do. An interesting wall from Moon attempting to block off Boots under his own tower, but he also ends up blocking himself off as well, so there's not too much he can do to follow that up. But just trying to delay the Tamas a little bit, buy some time for four mates to come on back, though Boots two levels up on the dare off already. Moon again in the mid lane here, taking too much damage, falling Star Moon gets, but the shields are enough to save him for now. Flameshot misses the mark, doesn't manage to close it, and here comes the healing from Yumes as well to keep him alive for another re-engage, potentially onto Dreon here, but it looks like they will not do so. For those of you who may not be aware, Moon playing on a tank hero like Grok is actually not unprecedented because there was a point in Todak's history where Moon played quite regularly in the tank position. So while it's not his main role, he can still do stuff. For Maze though, not getting a lot of chances. The Tam is being very oppressive. I mean, he was recently buffed, so uh, it's understandable that he Ooh. can do that. But the enhanced chains here and the knockup keyboy has to dash away to safety. But the damage continues to be piled onto him. Momo shuts down keyboy. Very well played there. I do really like the use of the enhanced chain to stop the Selena mid path, knowing that he's definitely going to want to engage onto you. Onik already on top of the turtle as CW is trying to take out Momo, but the rest of Todak is there to back him up. Mm -hmm, they do get this objective, so right now Onik Esports sitting at a 3k gold lead ahead of Todak. Definitely will be able to press that advantage, looking to do that on the top side as well. Yeah, looking at this game, but hold on, there's a game is going on to Chico, and I don't think he can run away from this. Yeah, it's a free kill going over for Keyboy, and Onik Esports right now, they're really trying to push their, their advantage, and Todak. They're not having a lot of opportunities to actually counter engage against them. Yeah, we can definitely see that Onyx Esports is playing very aggressively right now. And Todak, they're just kind of responding to it. But it's, it's understandable. Right now, Yum's going to be caught out by himself. Keyboy versus Drian as well.
Flicker allows him to escape. They definitely need to find a way to shut down Yooms here. I mean, this healing has been just insane. Keeping Moon alive to be able to keep the fight just going on. Or to reignite them again. And now the way of Dragon coming out onto Formaze. And they get a revenge kill onto CW. But not quite enough to close the gap at this point. I think this is also a good time to kind of explain why the damage show is not quite as effective as the tank show. We can see an engagement up here as well, but the blessing of the Moon Goddess is just keeping Yumes and Chiku so topped up that Onyx, not much they can do about it. Moon is here to join the party though, gets the Guardian's Barrel to block off Drian's pathway out, finds Momo on the way out, and they're just collapsing onto him at this point. Shield's not enough to save him. Momo closes off that kill. Yeah, but even though Todak are managing to secure kills on the opposite side of the map, Formaze is now getting hunted down by CW, already not having a good EXP lane against Boots, and now getting targeted by the rest of Onyx. Todak, they're winning out in top lane, but they're losing a lot of structures on the other two lanes instead. Yeah, across the map, Onyx now has gotten four turrets compared to Todak only one. So Onyx definitely has the advantage in terms of the map space. They're pressing that as well by going into the jungle of Todak now just to strip them of the possible farm and buffs that they can get. But the healing coming from Momo keeps that fight alive and Boots is the one that's in trouble instead. Formate flickers in to continue the aggression. Not going to be able to close that out. Sans is still safe but they find Drian instead. And and Hans chains to knock him up. He is tanky though, so not going to be able to take him down. Yep. Oh, but CW is going to be able to find another one. The high and dry show having a lot of fun here in this game. It's a risky style of the hero to play, but can be very rewarding in the sense that it's quite easy to execute these squishier heroes as long as they are caught off guard. Because of that, Anak Esports gets another turtle. That puts them even more ahead now and they are trying to, well, push their lead in terms of objectives. It looks like Onyx just wants to close out this game as soon as possible and understandably so. I think they also don't have too much to look well. They do have Sans for that damage as well, so probably uh, better scaling in that sense. CW bottom side getting caught out, puts out the way of the dragon but still going to get taken down. Top side, Formes in trouble, takes damages and stuns to the face will not be able to get out. The engages continue in the mid lane as well. It's just relentless. Todak trying to go on to Drian here, but nothing else is going to happen to him. This is just an example of absolute chaos on the land of Dawn as both these teams are just playing their hearts out on the stage. Formaze obviously knowing that he's not getting out of that situation, even putting out a few friendly recalls to his opponents before they are able to take him out. Anarchy Sports obviously still have the lead and they have a pretty solid scaling combo position as well, so Todak needs to be careful. Yeah, and honestly, looking at this game, if I will describe this game, I would say it's a battle of testosterone. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'll you guys. It rages on. I mean, <laughs> Keyboy now getting taken down by Todak, and they're trying to... The heals coming from Humes is just too much. Nobody on the side of Todak has fallen, but they've taken out Boots as well as Keyboy. Trying to find Drian now. The Enhanced Chains gets the knockout, but no damage coming through at the moment. Chiku follows up the shots. Will it be enough to close off the kill? Not just yet. Yeah, looks like Drian will be able to get away, but CW and Sun's in a little bit of trouble here. CW trying to get the stun for the reset on Shunpo. Blink forward, Abyss of Strike followed up by the charge from Wu and secures that kill. Yeah, and now they can continue. They get the mid-tier 1 turret as well. So Todak, they're starting to fight back now. Three turrets secured on their side. This gives them the opportunity to contest for this first Lord of the game. Right now, they're going to be doing a lot of damage, but Drian jumps in, a massive falling star moon. Yooms going to be keeping them all topped up. Moon somehow still alive. Boots going to be fixing that very quickly. Sun getting targeted in the back line, but he's able to secure the Lord. Double kill going over the boots as he picks off Chiku. Looks like Formaze is caught by himself as well. A shutdown going on to the Tira, forcing Momo and Yooms to retreat. But the falling star moon makes sure that Estes isn't going to be walking away. Scott free now being chased by three members of Onyx East. But Momo can only watch on in terror as he is forced to flee from his oppressors. 
on esports. Even though Todak responded, they respond in kind as well. Well, taking out almost all the members of Todak now and they continue on this bottom lane siege. Trying to take out the inhibitor, the Lord is coming as well, so they most likely will be able to get something out of this. Yep, yeah, Lord now going to be shopping in the bottom side. We can see that Onyx Esports going to be focusing on the bottom side and the middle lane, allowing the top lane to be cleared up. They want to be able to get some inhibitors here against Todak, who are putting up a solid defense. The Guardian's Bearer has just been insane in stopping that Lord from making any advances at all. So unfortunately, Onyx Esports couldn't make the best use of that objective. Have to back out now, clearing the jungle of Todak. CW get the knockup as well as the Way of Dragon on to Momo. It's one kill for them. Looks like they're pretty happy with that pickoff. Way of the Dragon combo from CW at this point is going to be enough to take out pretty much any member of Todak, perhaps with the exception of Moon. So they always have to be quite cautious when the Cho is within striking range. Todak now, they've basically been forced to stay in their base, but Forme is not happy with that arrangement. Finds one kill. Drian in a bit of trouble. Having to back out now. Looks like he will be able to get away. But that insane play by Forme is in black guy. But CW though on the bottom gets taken out. That's rough for CW. He tried to flicker in to get the way of the dragon onto Chiku. And if he had succeeded, that would have been a free kill on the Leslie. But he was just a little bit short. The sprint from Chiku enough to get him away. And that put him completely out of position. We can see in terms of item builds, CW is going for a pretty default damage. Cho Momo as well going for full damage on the Julian. Sun's chasing down Moon here in the jungle. Puts out enough damage to chunk down half his HP, but unfortunately doesn't look like they can close off that kill just yet. Mountain Shocker being popped now, but it's just going to help in providing vision. Vision might be what they need right now, though. Knowing where Todak is on the map will enable them to do something. Boots tries to go in on Moon, who he sees is low on HP. But Todak, they have an Estus. That's not going to matter too much as they're able to disengage again. Ooh, the Abyssal Arrow coming from Keyboard actually got Moon in the back, but the heals from Yumes just kept him up and the flame shot wasn't enough to seal the deal. But right now, so that eSports will look actually pretty even. I mean, they're about 4k gold apart, 12 to 15. So honestly, it feels as if it still could be anyone's game. It definitely can still be anyone's game, especially with CW. Is he, he actually does escape from that with just a sliver of HP. Well played to the man right there. Drian now going to be delaying for the rest of his team to take the Lord. Yep, definitely going the way of Sans here. Gets a free Lord. Onyx pressing their advantage. Finds Momo the knockup too, but nowhere for him to go except back to the base. And now Onyx Esports trying to push this up. Yumes tries to get away from this fight. Ooh. Manages to do that and instead pick up CW on the way out. Onyx Esports, they have one member advantage. Drian looking to push that, going all the way in the back line. Oh, and now Formaze is jumping in. He wants to kill on the Tamas, but misses the Abyssum Strike. It gets taken out by Keyboy instead. We now have the Lord pushing in for Onyx Esports. 4v2 Abyssal Arrow finds the Moon, while Charge won't keep him alive. Yumes not going to be able to do anything to defend against this. And Onyx Esports will secure a victory against Todak. One to one, one game apiece. So Onyx Esport at least walks out of this series with a victory. Yeah, and like I said, looking at the game, it was a battle of testosterone. They were just fighting and fighting and fighting. It's almost like Onyx took uh, took some pieces off from from Todas book. It's like you know what, we're gonna throw bodies as well, and then we'll see what happens. And I feel like in this game, it's definitely good, just because Sans on there using Chin, using Chin is super good going into the later stages of the game. Once he has the, the, the Blade of Despair, the Endless Battle is going to be looking very good. And uh, we can definitely see, in terms, I, I, I feel like in terms of damage, the ECG is going to look very solid. It's going to be looking very, very good. And for the side of Todak, I feel like this is, like, let's, let's give him the benefit of the doubt, right? So I feel like it is a legit strategy that they're pulling off. It's just that they're not, they're not actually showing the the heroes that they specifically want to use. So they're just subbing out certain heroes to make sure that they don't give too much uh, for the playoff. However, based on the things that I saw, we can definitely see the Estes can, can make sure that they, sustains for, they can sustain for a very long time in the fight. But certain decisions was very poor, like uh, Chiku's positioning, because 
he angled him, himself like a 90, 80 degree angle. I feel like if he, if he had more of a 45 degree angle, he would be able to avoid a lot of things because with that 90 degree, he, he, he got kicked by CW quite a few times. Mathematical mm. precision. <laughs> but technically, a 90 degree angle is the right angle. No. Well, oh. Oh, oh, snap. oh well. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> there you go, folks. Uh, we're, 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 we're live here for one more game, so make sure to, to, to catch the ship. But yeah, going back into the game, what Onik did well is, again, capitalizing on the mistakes from the side of Toda. And the way that they play is actually super dangerous. It's very risky. If they win, it looks explosive. And I think that's the best way to describe Toda as of right now, where it's good and bad. Where every time they play, I feel like, if we really want to call it, we need a coin. <laughs> ah, probably gonna win. It's always a 50-50% chance. And Onik, I feel like they won. They use arguably their their the best heroes, the best draft, going up against against Toda. And I feel like Toda in a way did actually show a lot to all the other teams that would be going to the playoffs. Well, it was kind of experimental, I guess, but it is still heroes that they could actually use, especially the Julian. I think it's a great, um, at least, platform for them to try that out. And Todak, as we know, tend to go for surprise, unpredictable picks as well. So this does play, you know, in the range of their usual play style. I do also think that, in a way, this game was a bit of training for Movo on that Julian because that's not really the type of hero he would oh, yeah. usually mm -hmm. play, especially in the jungle as well. So giving him a little bit of stage time against Onyx Esports with no strings attached is always helpful. You know, take this out of context, right? Like, oh yeah, Momo is trying out a hero against Onyx. Like, that's, you know, take that out of context, it will, it will sound weird. But right now, looking at the itemization, Humes, he, he wore a more defensive build. I feel like having one magical item earlier on could actually push them if, even further if they wanted to be a more snowball -y type of composition. And looking at Onyx Esport, I actually really like Drian on the Esmeralda. I feel like if you use it in the first game, it might have been uh, the difference maker. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's, that's, my, that's my personal uh, opinion. But right now, let's look at the damage numbers coming in from both sides of the team. I'm, I'm, I think Sans will be the highest, but I'm, I'm actually really curious on CW's damage. And yeah, Sans over here with 81,000 damage, and apparently CW only hit 31,000. But you know, logically, Leslie doesn't have the highest HP pool, so he, did, he doesn't need to deal that much damage. I think what's important 